Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys. Peep game. All right. Let's talk about an interview conducted by DJ, you know, Vanda Rally, DJ Fed, DJ I Cause You to Catch Cases, DJ I Try to Trap Brothers into Snitching on Themselves, uh, DJ Divisive, okay, DJ Instigator, you know who I'm talking about, the dude that claims he's from Oakland, but a lot of us dudes from the town don't know who the hell he is or where he's from, but anyway, he recently did an interview with Morris Day. Like I said, I wish people would stop talking to him. I, I, you know, people ain't gonna learn their lesson. All this history surrounding him, and it's been proven that the feds have used some of his interviews to put cases on people. He worked with the boys, but you know, hard head make a soft ass, but anyway. He did an interview with Moore's Day. I listened to it and he was basically asking one of those divisive questions, instigating once again between black people. And he talked about a situation that happened between Rick James and Moore's Day. Basically, he said that as Prince started to blow up, uh, Rick James got a little envious of him. Now, I'd heard things that Rick James had it in for Prince after a while. You know, Prince went on to become Prince. Unfortunately, both of these iconic musicians are not around. Rest in peace to the great Prince and rest in peace to the great Rick Jane. Bitch. But, <laughs> and Prince, uh, preach from Arrested Development. You uh, you know you owe me some money, right? You know you owe me some money, right? Would well, you guys like to play a game of basketball? But, you know, shout out to the great Prince, you know. Um, basically, he said, as Prince did his con concerts, and that's usually how it starts. The backup act starts to gain momentum, and then the headliner starts to spaz out. And he said, basically, Rick James kind of started hating on Prince and had an issue with him. You know, in the music industry, it's, it's competition. You know, at the end of the day, these guys are all out to sell records. As I said before, it's enough people for, you know, everybody to make a substantial amount of money, but it's always been the record labels themselves with their Kuta Kente contracts that they give most artists. I know I used to be an artist. I know how these record labels get down. <laughs> They offer you some Kuta Kente roots type of contracts. And most of the time, you don't know what you're reading and signing. You know, uh, unfortunately, I did the unthinkable. I went to L.A. and met with Barry Weiss of Jive Records at the time. You know, I was working on a solo album. Uh, demo tape. Um, I was gonna present it to my brother because my brother was my uh, was my manager, and um, uh, I was signed to his record label. So I was working on a secret project. I was gonna present to my brother, and we was gonna put it out. But boy, after I met with Jive, I never wanted to rap again after that contract. I, I, the funny part about it was I didn't understand it, but I understood. Mm hmm. No way. So, because as I said before, I'm a writer. That's why I keep trying to tell y'all that uh, you 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 know, uh, hip hop Elvis ain't the greatest of all time. My town can write. Me and my brother both can write. We are both registered writers with ASCAP Publishing. My brother can write, and town business can write. Real talk. Every rap I ever wrote, I. You know what I'm saying? I performed it, uh, composed it, and I used to produce, co-produce. Not, you know, produce, but co-produce. But um, anyway, that's that's just how it happens. Um, we all know what became of Prince. Prince went on to become one of the biggest uh, acts in history until his passing. 
a few years ago, and we know what happened with Rick James. Rick James was an iconic um, artist, but Rick James, as you guys know, is history, substance abuse, just a lot of issues. Brilliant musician. And that's usually how it starts. The guys can't get along. So, to make a long story short, hold on one second. All right, I'm back. To make a long story short, uh, they ended up having a falling out. And the thing about Prince, uh, Prince almost quit. Now, I will say this about Mick Jagger. I don't have no issues with Mick Jagger because at the end of the day, James Brown kind of put Mick Jagger on. So Mick Jagger, you know, looked out for a few uh, artists. So he helped, uh, he put Prince on one of his tours and unfortunately it was a disaster. Now we all know how Prince used to dress, you know, the heels and uh, the trench coat with the bikini drawers on, you know, uh, yeah. And it backfired on him. He opened up for the Rolling Stones and basically he came out, you know, like Prince and uh, he got beer bottles threw at him and got called every name but a child of God and basically Mick Jagger talked Prince into not quitting so like I said I have no issues with Mick Jagger don't have no issues with Mick Jagger you know because like I said he always acknowledged that James Brown helped put him on when he broke out and made his way into America and the same thing with uh David Bowie, I don't have no issues with David Bowie, rest in peace, because David Bowie fought hard to get black people's music played on MTV because MTV didn't even acknowledge black music. You know, real talk, which I think is a travesty when you consider that we created the music that they was hell bent on just playing, which was pretty much rock and roll and the nerve of MTV. But yeah, um, I, you know, I just, dude really just rubs me the wrong way, uh, DJ Vlad. This dude is the epitome of a culture vulture. Like I said before, it's funny, like I said, these artists, these people, this is what bothers me. They don't want to do interviews with us about stuff like that, but then again, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't believe in being divisive, you know, but it is what it is, man. It's your boy, Town Biz. I'm out.